Welcome to the Creative Community Podcast presented by Destination Arte. I'm David. And I'm Mark. And as brothers, we actually grew up together telling stories for over 15 years uh, back and forth. Now as adults, we want to continue telling those stories together. But the cool part is, is we want to invite you into our brother's brain trust. Yeah, we started this podcast uh, and this brand to share the beginning of our story, the things that influenced us as we were growing up, the stories um, the, the ideas that helped us grow and then to continue writing our story together, wherever that takes us, whatever the storytelling mode method becomes, that's why we're doing this. And so we're glad to have you with us. And how we've kind of packaged all that together is just, we like to say, we're building a community of people who work together to find creative solutions to tell inspirational stories. That's our heart. Yeah. And a lot of times we'll have guests on the podcast. We've had, uh, almost 30, 35, 40 interviews with incredible artists, which is such a cool number. And we've got a bunch more coming this year. We're getting ready to send out a bunch of emails, which by the time you hear this, we'll have sent them. And hopefully we'll have just, you know, you'll just be, your socks will be off when when you're listening to the list of of people. But Mark, today we're going to play a game. You've you've got a game for us. But before we play the game, I got something I want to show you. People who aren't, are listening at home, you're going to have to describe it for them if they're not watching on YouTube. I write back. All right, Mark, for those I'm standing out of frame, most of the frame is taken up by what I'm showing you. Can you describe for the listeners who might be just on like Spotify or or SoundCloud what I've got in my hands here? So David has a a holy relic of the Burrell (laughs) household. Now, what what is it though? Like if you were to say what it was, well, someone who doesn't know might think that it is a piece of wood that is less than what it's probably four by three maybe you know oh yeah if that yeah it's not that big but if you could see how scratched it is and if you could see all the nicks and dings and chips um but shall i tell them what it was used for can you in in one sentence or less everything um but (laughs) it's it was just a piece of wood it's a board but it was large enough that we could put anything on it. We could put a train on it. We could put Legos on it. We could yep. put, you know, all kinds of whatever, you know, Lincoln logs, uh, dad's farm kit from when yep. he was a kid that yep. he would get off the attic. I was attic, wondering if you'd it. remember that. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, hundred percent. Like, uh, it all went on that board because it's big flat surface. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it's, it's weathered. Yeah. If you can't, if you can't see it right now, Um, whenever you get done driving home or to work, try to go on YouTube and find this episode and uh, just take a quick look. It's really not that impressive. However, to the people who knew where it was under the bed and could pull it out when they needed it, it, um, mom was mad that I did not give it back to her yesterday uh, because it means so much to her. Yeah. Uh, And and I said, I'll give it back to you. I just need it for an episode with Mark and then I'll I'll give it back. I'm going to put it behind me for the rest of the episode. So I'm not just standing up out of frame. (laughs) But yeah, that is a storytelling artifact. You know, it's one of those like, if this could talk, then, you know, uh, Kenny Chesney has a song. If this bus could talk, it would tell you all these stories. If this piece of wood behind me could talk, the stories that have been told using it, uh, I think could fill you know, just an entire library. Um, Cause like you said, Legos, uh, the farm set, I think the train was on it one time, the Lego train and the HO scale train dad had a little circle set up on it. Um, you can see my mom has probably used it to cut things with an exacto knife a bunch of times. I don't know that you ever colored directly on it, but I know you probably put a book on it and then put a page on the book and colored mm-hmm. like with colored pencils or crayons when you were younger on the floor. Um, it would be in the floor in front of the TV and we could play on it while the TV was on. I think we even used it sometimes for the flip track, at least as a small part of it, if we were on more of a cushy carpeted surface. But yeah, I wanted to just bring a, a storytelling relic. Um, I don't I don't live where all of my storytelling relics are most of the time. They're all at my parents' house mostly from when I was a child. In fact, I need to go up on the attic. I better have a couple more up there I could surprise you with. But yeah, I thought, I don't know if you have anything else to say about this this wonderful board, but um, I wanted to just get your reaction to it. Well, thank you. I 
David texted the family group chat and said, look what I have. And I was like, <laughs> no, like I sent the Darth Vader saying, no, like, because I was so, and literally dad goes, what, well, what board's older than Marcus. And I said, we grew up together. We were, we were friends. Like it's that, and that's true. That board is older than I am. And so I have, I've known it it's, it's as long as any of my family members, I've known it longer than my dog, you know, like well, I will, pro I promise it'll go back to mom and dad's house and we'll arm yeah. wrestle about it later. But, um, it's, well, I wanted, I wanted to share it with you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Cause that is a great, um, I love that you, you called it a storytelling relic. I think that's a, that's, that's awesome. Cause that is truly what it is. And it also really inspires me. That's what I would love Arte to be just a beat up scratched old board that gives other people the platform to tell stories. That's what it is, is it's just on in a world of carpet, be a freaking board that let that that lets people, you know, just lay down and let people tell stories on you, you know? Yeah. And be so a solid maybe, foundation. Yeah. Be a solid foundation where people can just tell stories, you know, like use you to tell, to, to get their stories out there, you know? Yeah. So. That'd be awesome. I would love that. I think I'm going to leave that in just so everybody yeah. knows, but we talked about story. We talked about story relics. We're going to do that at the beginning of each of these fun episodes. And uh, we may do it uh, in other interview episodes. Who knows? Maybe we'll ask our guests about story relics and if they've got any like, that'd be a fun bonus question. That would be, yeah, um, that would be a good, yeah. Yeah. Um, subscribers only, you know, we'll see. Mm, yeah, um, but yeah, we're going to play a game and uh, Mark has uh, just, just come up with an incredible name for this game. It's called plot character genre. Um, yes. I don't know it, how else to describe it. And um, yeah. there's it, no, honestly, when, as far as names go, like, <laughs> it's yeah, you probably some of, some of my finest work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited to play this game because Good. it's a game that I've had in my head for a long time. I can't remember if we used to play it in the OG episodes or not, but where's, it's called plot character genre. It's probably something I pitched to you at one point or had in, in a note that never got used, but um, yeah, it's back. I have to go back and, and it, listen to the eons of episodes that we made. And Please, let's not. <laughs> let's not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. People can do it if they want to. But this game is called plot character genre. And what David and I are going to do is we're going to take turns. We've each brought a list of plots based on movies that we've seen, a list of genres of stories and a list of characters from movies. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do pick two. So in the starting round, I'm gonna pick two, mix and match from my three categories. And then David is going to throw me the curveball of the third thing. You'll see how that works. We'll play probably two or three rounds so that you guys can get it. But the goal then is once we've named the plot character and the genre, then David and I have to reconstruct that story to now fit with our new like um, criteria. So, oh boy. All right. So the set of characters from this round that I'm going to pick is the characters from the Fellowship of the Ring. So I want I want the just that movie, just the, the whoever the Fellowship is. I want that set of characters, but I want them in a Hallmark movie. It, the the uh, the the plot is then the rookie. So this is a, a Disney movie about a minor league baseball player, actually about a, a high school baseball coach slash teacher who becomes a minor league baseball player who becomes a major league baseball player. It's a great movie. Um, the main character looks too old um, for most of it, um, but <laughs> it's just it's just our secret. Movies. Everyone's secret complaint with that movie is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways. All right. Yeah. So you've got the Fellowship of the Ring characters. Uh, in a Hallmark movie that is basically the plot of the rookie. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we want to make that something that the Fellowship of the Ring characters would want, like one of them wants to be a major league. I was going to say, like, is Aragorn the rookie? Like, is he the one who wants to be? I, possibly. I think Aragorn is a good choice because this is an older character. So I could just see, I could just see that being an interesting thing to put the Aragorn character into where He's still on the road to something and it's really more about the journey, which, yeah, I like it. Let's try Aragorn. So instead of the ring, it's the diamond. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And he, I like <laughs> and he, I would, I just picture like the rookie, but there's always like four small people around him that he can't seem to get rid of, you know? So like Aragorn is like, he's throwing a fastball, but like there's a dude eating like a, you know, like second breakfast, like nice. next to the, next to the, the pitching like meter that the, the, you know, cause there's that great scene in the rookie where he's throwing fastballs next to the speed, the speedometer. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. The thing that makes you see tells if you're speeding. Like I could just see one of them, like 
not knowing and like getting beamed in the head, walking out from one of behind one of those, you know, um, he throw, he, in the rookie, he throws against chain link fences a lot. So I can see maybe Aragorn is trying to become like a master swordsman or, or is he just ooh. playing baseball? The are there any world. Lotar sports like that are known? They That's play true. foot, they play football. Like I've, I'm reading the Hobbit right now. And someone mentions football in the, in the story. Is that kick the ball with your foot? I think because he's because Tolkien was British. Okay. Um, sci fi stack exchange. Uh, there's a reference to golf. Oh, that's what it is golf. That's how the game of golf was invented when the goblin's head goes down. Well, and the Hobbit also says kick sky high for a football. Yes. They're not sure if this is a reference to actually playing football or if it was him just referencing football because his audience would be familiar with them shooting bows on foot and horseback was a chief sport. And then they all did swimming and diving and rowing and sailing. And they obviously archery competitions. And then the elves also have sports. So, and there's like dart throwing. I feel like, I feel like archery is a good one for Aragorn in that context, you know, because I could even see something where they've put something on the end of the arrow. That's dull and round and they're shooting it at, a batter who's trying to defend something yeah kind of like a mix like a, between cricket and baseball right he has like a war hammer and it's like a mm-hmm. you know the dwarfs are always the designated hitters and they're just like yeah you know and just, so the archer has to like curve it or arch it up and they mm-hmm. have to try and you know like there's slow yeah. pitch and there's fast pitch and yeah no, there's that's big good. bow and there's small bow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no that's good t-bow but, and no i'm just kidding right right um, <laughs> But the problem is, is that as Aragorn is trying to get toward his goal, he meets a businesswoman from the city who is far too busy and has not a good relationship with her father, unfortunately. But Aragorn, <laughs> Aragorn, yeah, exactly. Aragorn befriends Elrond, who's actually his archery coach. And then she comes from the big city because she's like just burnt out. Like she just mm. is having such a hard time. She's engaged though. So she's trying to plan a wedding and she has all this elvish business to attend to. And she's like, you know what? I should just go to the Rivendell forest where my dad lives. I should just relax for the holidays. And then all of a sudden there's Aragorn and he's just like hitting, like popping dingers and he's just doing it all. Like, you know, he's, he's doing it all. And she's like, oh my goodness. Like, I didn't even know that that people in middle earth wore flannel, but there it is. And there he is. And he looks amazing. So she's not there to teach. Uh, she's not the new Hobbit school teacher, like oh trying my. to corral all the little Hobbit people. That's that's like 1800s Hallmark. Okay. I was thinking like Hallmark Christmas, but okay, Hallmark. Christmas well, I should have specified that though. I should have specified that because I did not say Hallmark Christmas. I just said Hallmark. So and then maybe she's like trying to make a decision, and she's out, and Gandalf visits in like a red robe with a red hat, mm-hmm. and right. you know tells her something about the magic of whatever. Right. Uh, And Aragorn has definitely been married before. So he knows how to treat like a woman, you know, he really does, but she's never been in love. She's she's from back East, you know, who like, and, but here's this masculine, you know, he's got like two kids and they're, you know, they're a little rowdy, but they're, they have great hearts. They really enjoy having Miss Elf as a school teacher, you know, (laughs) And this movie is great. I'm, her husband's name is, or her fiance's name is Sauron or Isildur or, <laughs> yeah, we got options. Hashtag justice Saruman, for Sauron, even. the dump. Yeah. Hashtag justice for Sauron. Poor guy. The only other thing. Or, or Gollum, the, the clingy boyfriend. The clingy yeah, the really with. clingy boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe Gollum like pre- degradation right and right and her spurning him sends him down that path right because Because it's the he, fellowship of the diamond because he takes because, the diamond with right him. he wanted the diamond like yeah. his dream was to play like um oh maybe his dream was to play and his like so the the dad elrond is like the gm and he cut him you know mm, years okay. ago and so he's wanted the diamond for years like he's just wanted to be on the diamond like and boromir is definitely like the other guy that gets called up with Aragorn at the same time. Right. Who's constantly. The, yeah. In the rookie, there's another player that gets called up with the pitcher to the majors at the same time. And so that would be Boromir and Aragorn's relationship right. there. But he gets cut <laughs> before the plot even gets going. He gets cut and we never see him again. Yeah. Yeah. 
or maybe Legolas is the guy that that goes up with Borm with Aragorn. That could be. He's the guy, and Boromir well, is kind of the older player that gets cut because he's at the end of his career, and Legolas is Legolas is actually the really good star. So we can keep a little bit of authenticity there. Right, because I was going to say in in both the Hallmark and the Rookie sense, it would be nice if not all of the Fellowship characters came up with him. If some right. of them were just populating the team, right. and they're the people that in the Hallmark sense help him learn all his life lessons. But in the rookie sense, they're just they're on the team, you know, so. And so then the the quote on the cover of the movie is Santa Claus is never late. He arrives exactly when he's supposed to. (laughs) (laughs) Or true love is never late. Oh, there we go. There we go. True love is never late. It arrives exactly when it's supposed to. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, plot character genre in action. All right. All right. I love it. That story is written. I say we move on. Okay, great. I love it. Round one, complete. We won. Excellent quote. Excellent quote. All right, round two. We're going to come up with another story here, plot, character, genre. I'm going to give Mark a plot and a genre, and he's going to bring me a cast of characters to sit in here. So it kind of is going to be the same as last time, but you'll see how it's the same except different. All right, Mark. So for your plot, I've got, a, it's called Rocket Launch. It's basically the story of October Sky. Mm. Do you remember this movie very well? Yeah, I think I can. I think I can parse my way through it. Okay, and the genre is going to be, um, it's actually going to be a Western. It's kind of playing into that a little bit, the current genre of the movie, but I I feel like the genre of October Sky is more drama than Western. Mm -hmm. So there's your plot, October Sky, Rocket Launch, um, and genre is Western. So give me a set of characters to put into this place and we'll see what happens to them. Well, in that case, if we're dealing with the October Sky plot and in Western and in a Western, then I'm going to give you the characters from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, my. OK. So for those who may not be familiar, um, October Sky is, a, I think, another Disney movie about a young boy growing up in a mining town. Um, he's very mechanically engineering. He he's, has a big dreamer. And it seems that his destiny is that he will be a miner like his father's 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 father before him. And instead, he works really hard and studies hard and learns math and keeps shooting off these model rockets and um, and has a conflict with his father. And um, very, very good movie. I would definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it before. Um, but, but, but the characters from Napoleon Dynamite are, um, I'm going to say, still as wholesome, but not, um, not quite as uh, as. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just get into it. Um, present, yeah. Yeah. Cognitive so, present. all right. We got Napoleon. We got Deb, the girl that he has a crush on. We got Kip. We got Uncle Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Summer, who's another girl from school. We got Pedro. Um, we've got the karate instructor. We got LaFonda, who is Kip's online girlfriend. Uh, we got a grandma. Yeah, we got, we got some we got some options here. I think we got some heavy hitters. I think we can piece this together really well. Yeah, because I think grandma can still play the the role of you're never going to be anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, and I think Uncle Rico is a great his dad character. Oh, okay. You want to put Uncle Rico in the dad character? I think so, because Uncle Rico is like just never treats him like like he's anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and Uncle Rico is so stuck in his like football thing which is very much like an October sky. It's either football or mining, you know? And so that could be like a good. And Kip does suck up to him a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, The only person we're kind of missing is the teacher that believes in him, but we could easily make that into like a girlfriend or. um... Yeah, that is, that is interesting. The teacher who believes in him because in, or oh. the, we could make it the karate instructor and change the karate instructor from being this crazy, insane person to actually being, it's almost That's like good. a karate kid situation. I was also thinking it would be funny if it was just the guy who, when Napoleon says, drinks the milk and says, this one's the defect and this one is bleach. And he says, that's correct. Like, and he goes, yes. What if that was who the teacher was? It's just the one person in his life who ever told him that's correct. Oh, and like, true. It encouraged him. Like, okay. I like it. Know? I like it. Maybe it's not a rocket launch. Maybe it's those, all those jobs Napoleon does like working at the chickens. And um, yeah. maybe it's one of those random things where that's actually what he's good at. Maybe he's actually really good at dancing. Right. Exactly. And like, maybe dancing he wants is- to be a dancer instead of a football player. 
dancing literally is his rocket like in in the yeah. plot of the movie so is this just napoleon dynamite but with different names of the characters no. or is this actually october sky with the characters from napoleon dynamite that's true we need okay so we do need to solve the problem it's crazy how the... closely related these two movies are <laughs> that is the beauty of plot character genre <laughs> mark's face right now if you can see it he's just so proud of himself he's because like i just is- figured it out I, yeah. you figured it out he's saying to me that i figured it out and this is what he's been telling me for two years i think the biggest thing that needs to be solved we've kind of got some of the characters in place but i really do want to explore the western october sky element oh western and it, that's the thing we've left out and like is is napoleon has he discovered like oh that could be interesting if he so like the like Chinese culture knew how to make fireworks and rockets before European culture did, you know, so it could be interesting if if Napoleon is introducing this small mining town in the West to this like technology, you know, mm. um, and so and of course, no one believes in him, you know, because the technology and, of dancing. No, 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 no. The technology of Chinese rocketry. Oh, oh, oh um, OK, because I don't I don't think that it's. Because we said the characters from Napoleon Dynamite, I don't want to just shoehorn October Sky and and Napoleon together. I okay. want to keep the characters from Napoleon with the plot. Like I want the the no one believes in me. I'm building a rocket to to happen. You know. But it'll have to be a showdown because it's a western. Oh, so is it a rocket versus rocket showdown? Like like is summer. And her like peppy oh. squad building a rocket, and Napoleon and Pedro and Deb are building a rocket because that's the that's the them competing for who's class president in the movie. So there could be a face off situation. Okay. okay. So is uh, or is it is he is his showdown with Kip? Kip or Rico? Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting if if Uncle Rico thought that he could throw a football farther than. Oh. And Napoleon could launch a rocket. There you we know? go. Yeah. And so they have like a bet where it's like whoever wins gets to go to college or, you know, whatever. Like, and true to the plot of October Sky, the rockets would not succeed for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be until the end that he actually gets a successful rocket off the ground. Right. <laughs> that movie is so good. Yeah, man. It, it, uh, it gives me one of those uh, wet eye moments every time. Yeah. So I got to go figure out how to find it and watch it. All right. Well, that was plot character genre for Napoleon Dynamite characters in an October Sky movie with a Western theme. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right. That was the end of round two. All right. For the final round of plot character genre, I am going to lead us off here and I'm going to bring the plot of National Treasure. OK, so I have the plot of National Treasure, but it is in the genre of a superhero movie. What kind of superhero movie? Like a Marvel style, like so like not an, not an origin story. Oh, that could be. I think some of the Marvel movies are. This is this person's beginnings. There's other Marvel movies that are just. Well, here's maybe this is something. National Treasure was supposed to be the first movie in a Mission Impossible style franchise. Like the goal was to create a franchise out of that series. So I think it should be like the first one in a Marvel superhero. So like Thor the first movie or Captain America, first Avenger or something like that, where it's actually meant to set up these people as we're going to follow this person for a long time and, and be involved in their adventures. So, all right. So we're going to do the characters from Anne of Green Gables. Oh my gosh. How's that? (laughs) You're reaching back into my, I was sick as a homeschooler days for this one. Anne Shirley, Gilbert Blythe, Marilla Cuthbert, Matthew Cuthbert, Rachel Lind, Josie Pye, Diana Barry, Muriel Stacy, Mrs. Barry, Minnie Mae Barry, Minister Allen, George Barry, Moody Spurgeon. So I guess Anne is our is our hero, our superhero. She's Nick Cage. Well, she's Nick Cage in a superhero movie. So she's um, Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> sorry (laughs) that's hilarious okay (laughs) but yeah she's our protagonist okay Uh, she's the she is a she's a great protagonist so is gilbert blythe the german the dutch german woman from who who is an enthusiast about like who has an extensive uh knowledge of the universe collection of george washington yeah 
Yeah, I she, yeah, he would have to be. Okay, I like this. I like this. But it's- we've got Diana as a great side character. Um, I can't remember this kid's name. Uh, Riley. Riley. Yeah, Diana yeah. is going to be a great Riley. I think so too. So, and of course, uh, Mrs. Barry is Mrs. Barry the school teacher. I can't remember who the school teacher is. Is that Rachel or Muriel Stacy? I think is the school teacher. Anyways, they're going to be a great Sean Bean type bad guy. Always I'm just super glad around. that Sean Bean is in this episode twice. I'm so happy. <laughs> and um, Matthew Cuthbert uh, going to be a great father to go visit, you know, uh, mm-hmm. when things get and tough. And to a chair. Yeah. yeah. And who's disappointed with your life choices. Yeah. The only uh, tricky part will be that Marilla is still alive, but um, that'll be fine, I think. It's, it'll just be a you're going to see mom and dad instead of just dad right well they're divorced in the in the oh National they are movie okay. so okay. did you never see the second one they go see her i only saw it once it was the one time that i watched it with bethany and i laughed so hard that i was like i don't even know if i need to watch it again okay because bethany well, made that joke so nick cage is running in slow motion across the tilting platform and we're all just like on the edge of our seats and bethany says they want you to think that he's running in slow motion but that's actually how fast nicholas cage runs <laughs> and it brought down the house and i don't remember how the movie ends because that is the highlight of the movie for me every time that i watched it was that moment so the joke shout is out to bethany movie. yeah she was, shout on, out uh, to bethany. she was on an episode of the podcast go find it it's called uh art learning with bethany Burrell. Yeah. So. And if you can find the National Treasure Easter egg in that episode, man, hats off. <laughs> what else do we need to develop here? We've got it's a superhero movie. It's um, the plot of yeah. National Treasure, which is the, which is a good superhero movie. They're figuring stuff say, out. They're fighting bad guys. The biggest thing we need to figure out is kind of like where we were with the October Sky Western, where it's like, how does National Treasure fit into the superhero genre? Like, is it just they're after a MacGuffin? And so that's enough. Like they're chasing some sort of you know, treasure. I really do like the idea of a superhero treasure hunt movie, though. Like, that's a cool idea. Is that not all of the Marvel movies of them collecting the Infinity Stones? No, but I mean, like a real treasure hunt, like where there's, well, I guess that is, but I like a real, like a, like a Raiders of the Lost Ark style yeah, treasure yeah, yeah. hunt where, but no, I get that, it. So, I mean, that is what they are doing when they collect the Infinity Stones, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like that because they're, they know where the stones are all the time. They just have to go get them. I think it's the not knowing where the next thing is, but knowing that it is out there. I think that's the part that makes Treasure Hunt so exciting is like, I've got this step and I just need the next step. Whereas in the Marvel movies, they're kind of omniscient kind of most of the time as far as where the stones are. Right. Or someone is omniscient. I think National Treasure is closer to being a superhero movie than something like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. Wow. Because Raiders, like in the Indiana Jones franchise is all about someone failing in the area of their strength. He is a master treasure hunter who never ends up with the treasure. Like mm. never, he never gets the treasure. And that is his thing is he's a treasure hunter. The treasure helps him learn about his relationships. Like yeah. he loses the treasure, but he gains a better relationship with his father or with a close friend or with his son or something. So whereas National Treasure is like a superhero movie in that they actually get the thing like Nick Cage gets the treasure both times and they do win. They beat Thanos. They get the sorry, spoiler, but they get the Infinity Stones and they beat Thanos. You know, I think that's why National Treasure is actually a good fit for the superhero genre, because they do achieve the goal in the end. They triumph. He has the right people around him that know when daylight savings time was implemented and Right. And he even has the guy in the chair, like Spider-Man. This is a very Spider-Man-esque story. Oh, like yeah. Your yeah. friendly neighborhood cage, where he's yeah. just friendly neighborhood Nick. I like but that. this is Anne that we're talking about. Anne Shirley. Oh, dog, dog, God. I forgot about Anne. I'm sorry, <laughs> Anne. Our Anne of Green Gable stands are going to just go nuts over, like, how little I know about these characters. I'm so sorry. But I still think she's a great superhero because she is constantly battling herself. And she's constantly sabotaging herself because of her self-doubt. She has a Gilbert to go out and rescue or, you know, impress. And she has a Diana, a bosom friend there right by her side, supporting her through everything. So this is a pretty good Captain America character set, I think. I just want it to be 
if it was ever made, I want it to be as like angsty and emotionally tumultuous as Anne of Green Gables. Is this just a Spider-Man movie? I think like, it is. The I amount of is. angst? I think it is a Spider-Man movie, but I want Anne to have the inability to emote of Nick Cage. Like I want her okay. to be so tum- like emotionally tumultuous, but just the same line reading with every, every just, oh, I think I was going to go over there and talk to, talk to, uh, you know, talk to Gilbert, but then I realized I needed to go find this treasure. So, like, the reason I, that Nick Cage did face off is so that he would be able to make a different facial expression for one movie. So <laughs> just throwing that out there. So yeah, I think this is more of a Spider-Man superhero movie, but that would be a fun, a Spider-Man treasure hunt with Anne Shirley as the main, like what's her superpower? I think of her being able to like she walked that roof line and I didn't know Mm -hmm. if there could be that's kind of Spider-Man-esque like I didn't know if we could just literally turn it into a like she has Spider-Man powers because the thing about Anne is that she's very her relationships are the relationships are the story right like Mm -hmm. she'd make a great Gwen Stacy like that sort of like that that elegant like you know oh yeah because she's an orphan Mm -hmm. and she's living with relatives And she has a best friend that she thinks is the only person who understands her. And she has an attractive significant other, you know, she has a crush on them for a long time. Can't tell them, can't reveal who she really is. Can't let her, can't let her in-person persona down and be revealing. So yeah, we're, we're on a roll with this one. All she needs is just a treasure hunt to get her out into the woods. And she has it with that creepy cabin that she falls in that hole. Mm -hmm. And there's that weird person there. And then she has the school teacher that doesn't want her to succeed, like J.J. Abrams character. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or not J.J. Abrams. Um, (laughs) J.J. Abrams just doesn't want Spider-Man. No, no. (laughs) She's against him. Why did I say that? What's his name? Uh, J. J. Jonah Jameson? J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Why did I get those two mixed up? You're fine. That's funny. J. Jonah Jameson's character. That doesn't. So that's the same with the school teacher. And then Mrs. Barry is also like, do not talk to my daughter. You know, she'd have, she'd have conflict there. So this is great. I'm all in. I'm all in on this. Anne of Green Gables as a, as a superhero in a treasure hunt type movie. And I think one thing that I think is kind of the takeaway for me from this is something that you were saying, David, from the course you were taking, I think was that there are different types of stories. Some are plot driven stories, some are character driven stories, and some are like event or or I don't, I don't know how you phrase that. I don't know if you want to recap that for us or. Oh yeah. Um, And actually SD Smith took this from someone else who I can't remember what he said, but, but he helped us see two types of stories. And I think there are more, but character stories or event stories where there's either an event that needs to be conquered, solved, gotten to, accomplished, you know, get to that event, or there are characters that need to be developed, grown, matured, or defeated. I think it's interesting as you plug different characters into different plots, you really do see are things character driven or plot driven, you know, like are the characters like the Anne of Green Gables characters are strong enough because they're from a character driven story to drive any plot, you know, because they're so developed, you know, and some characters are not as much. They rely on that plot to get them kind of where they're going. And so I just think that's cool to see with these is you see different things shine through and different, you know, like different things take over. Like the Napoleon Dynamite characters almost took over October Sky just just with a full charge, you know. Um, so I think that was just interesting. That was something I really enjoyed observing throughout the episode. If you're trying to tell a story, even if you're just trying to tell a story in a single picture, like a painting, or if you're trying to tell a story in a photograph, or if you're actually trying to write a story, if you're trying to tell a comic book or a, an animated movie or whatever it is, don't be afraid to take what you liked or what works for your story from other stories. Because mm-hmm. we wa- we watched the the characters from Anne of Green Gables, which many people view as a book for girls or a about a girl who lives in northeast and almost it can just just change the conflict and it becomes a superhero story you know give mm-hmm. give Anne the ability to have perfect balance and give her really high places to go and you've got a superhero story and so don't be afraid to take things from stories that you like and see how they would fit into your story and don't be afraid to study those stories and and glean from them and learn from them. If everyone if anyone wants to rewind to that moment where Mark's face said, "This is what I've been trying to tell you," it's I think it's midway through round two. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much, David, for doing plot character genre with me. Yeah. Mark, did you know uh, people that subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud have clear skin? They Really? Yeah. It'll clear your skin right up. Um, they'll get to listen to episodes like this one. They'll get to listen to interviews. Um, and then uh, they'll they'll be able to comment and tell us, hey, this cured my acne. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's it's a story that I'm telling. Well, did you know that people who send this episode to a friend all of a sudden actually uh, like they gain muscle mass? Oh, oh, wow. So everyone I see walking around with their headphones on, with their shirt sleeves stretched across their biceps, they've probably shared an episode of the Creative Community Podcast with a friend. Yeah, they just went, they hit that share button. Nice. I love it. Well, people who connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, they all, all they have to do is search Destination Arete, that's A-R-E-T-E, and, and they'll find out more information for episodes like this one, and they'll be involved in community activities. They'll get to participate in plot character genre with us after this episode is available. We're going to let them help us on Instagram and Facebook create a plot character genre game, and they also they know why they can't digest lactose. They they figured it out. The people who subscribe to the newsletter, and I'm talking like these people, they get like the first, they're the first to hear about upcoming interviews. They get sneak peeks of future content, all that kind of stuff. They get to read David's incredible writing. And they simply do this by going to destinationarte.com slash contact or sending an email to destinationarte at gmail.com to subscribe. Like these people who have the newsletter, okay, they not only like I, most likely if you're subscribed to the newsletter, then you don't have acne, right? And most oh, yeah. likely, yeah, most likely you have like a ton of muscle mass, okay? Sure. And you probably know why you can't digest lactose. Or like, you've, it's cured it, what, one of the Right, two. or it's cured it, yeah, yeah. like because of, of how much. But you will also, if you do, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll never get the hiccups again. Oh. Proven. <laughs> I've got to go subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> I've been battling them all episode. <laughs> also- is it apparent or not that I have never shared an episode with a friend ever? Like <laughs> I have never. <laughs> I wasn't going to comment on that. I've never, never shared. <laughs> this is the, do not be like me kids? Share the episode with, you with a friend. All right. Do all those things and then come back in two weeks for another episode from the Creative Community Podcast. It'll be an interview or a game like this. We'll see you then. Bye.